Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn to read and write Hindi. We are also here because we are learning to read and write Urdu. We are doing both at the same time. Today is our lesson number 26. And today we'll start a new topic. I'll make three videos on it. And you'll see in a second why we require why it will require three videos on the topic of Hamza, something called Hamza. Let's take a look at it. So here's a brief introduction of Hamza. First of all, it looks like this, as you see right there. Right there, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger here. It goes like that and it goes like this. This is what it looks like. And I was about to say this letter, but even though it's part of the alphabet, but it's not really a letter. No it is, the th it is the third last letter of the Urdu alphabet. We have a Hamza, then a Chotiye and a Badiye. That's how the alphabet ends in Urdu. Chotiye, Badiye. And before, right before that is Hamza. No word, no word in Urdu language begins with Hamza or ends with Hamza. It just does not happen. No letter, uh, no word spelling would require you to begin the word with Hamza or would require you to end the word with Hamza. It always appears in the middle, somewhere in the middle and most of the time as the penultimate letter. Penultimate meaning the second last letter in the spelling. We'll see that in a second why that happens. <coughs> Where is Hamza used? Well, it's used primarily on three occasions. Hamza, Hamza is used. Hamza is used when the spelling of a word is such that Alif, Alif is followed by Wow, and we know now what Wow looks by now. Wow looks like this. When Wow so it's used in the spelling of Hamza is used where the spelling of the word is such that Alif is followed by a Wow. If that happens, we will use Hamza. For example, here's Alif and here's Wow. Alif is followed by a Wow. Alif and Wow. So we don't write it like this. We don't write it in two separate letters. We write a Wow and we put a Hamza on it. And that produces a sound of O. Chotiyo ki matra. Right there. O. And it will look like this. Instead of putting instead of putting alif and a vowel as two separate letters, we just put a vowel and hamza on it. And that becomes O. The second place where you will find is that when alif, when alif is followed by chotiye, when alif is followed by chotiye, like this here, alif and a chotiye, instead of writing it like this, alif and a chotiye, we write chotiye, we write chotiye, and on top of it, Put a symbol like this, and that produces the sound of badi ki matra. We have done many a times. We know the chotiye is used in Urdu for badi ki matra. So that's the e, badi. In the third place where you will see hamza is used, it is when alif is followed by badi. Just like here, alif and a badi. Instead of writing it like that with two separate letters, we write the badi, and we put a symbol on it, and that makes a. That makes A, Choti A, not Badi A, Choti A. This is Badi E, this is Chota U, Ch O rather, Chota O ki matra, Chota O, Badi E, Choti A. That's what the three places where you will see it. Today, in this video, we'll do some examples, some words, where we'll see how Hamza is used in the first case. When it is, when Alif is followed by a wow. As I said in the beginning of the video, I'll make three parts. Now you know why. Tomorrow, we'll do some words where Alif is followed by Choti Ye. And then finally, third part, we'll, we'll cover some words where you will see Alif being followed by Badi Ye. So today we'll see the words. Today we'll see the words which require O ki matra, Choti O ki matra. Let's begin, shall we? Some very simple words. I think you can erase all of this thing now. Some very simple words, and you'll see there. There's a pattern. They all follow a certain pattern, at least in the beginning. Before we, before we'll get into more complicated words, at least the first four or five words. I only have ten words, but four or five, first four or five words will follow the same pattern. So here's the first one. A, ah, and we know now how to make a. Ah. We take a alif, and on top of it we put a symbol there. This symbol is called mud. This is nothing new. We have learned it already. Alif mat a that makes the a sound. And then we have 
O. Uh, o. O is a leaf and a vowel. That's an O. Let's stop here for a second. Let's talk for o. briefly, very briefly, we'll talk about Oki Matra. We don't need to talk about Bari Oki Matra, we'll just talk about Chodi Oki Matra. When we were learning Oki Matra, I don't remember which day it was, but we spent four days learning Oki Matra. When we were learning Oki Matra, we learned that we take a little, for example, if we take a letter B and combine it with a vowel and we put them together like this, that makes a Bo. That's a Bo. Similarly, if we take a P and combine it with a vowel, it will make a Po. And so on and so forth. When we have an Aleph, we combine it with a vowel, we don't combine them. It does not combine. It, it, and nor does it sit by itself. Nor does it sit like this. It becomes like this. Wow and Hamza. And that makes an O sound. So here we have A, O. Instead of writing A and then O like this, which is what it should have been, because if Be plus Wow, Be and Wow makes a Bo, Be and Wow makes a Bo, Alif and Wow should make O. Logic dictates that it, that's what it should be. But that's not how we write it. It's an exception. Alif is an exception. Alif is an exception. So that's, instead of writing it like this, we write it like this. A, O. There you go. We used, we made, we made our first use of Hamza. We wrote our very first letter, the very first word rather, with Hamza. Ao. Just a few more. Just a few more. They're going to follow the same part, same pattern. Nothing is nothing complicated. So here is Jim. Jim. That's a J. J. To which we're going to put an Aleph to make it a Ja. And then Aleph and a Wow. O. Jao. And now we know by now that when Alif is joined, it no longer maintains, when Alif, when Alif is about to join the next letter, it no longer retains the shape. It looks like this. To which Alif is joined. And instead of writing it like this, we write it like this. So it looks, it looks much pretty than writing it like this, Jao. We don't write it like this. We write it like that, Jao. It's also because it's economical. It's quicker to just put a Hamza on it instead of stopping and putting Alif and a Wow. They are the same thing. But that is not how it's written. They both read the same thing. They both read Jao. But this is how we write it. Wow with the Hamza on it. Let's put it there. Ja O. Just a few more. As I said, they are very straightforward, simple. Here's another one. We're going to combine Lam with the Aleph. That makes a Lam. That makes a Lam. And you got it. You, you figured it out what it is. Lao. Lao. Bring something. Lao. Not, not equal. I'm going to say plus. Lao. And when everything is put together, first thing that happens is that the Aleph is going to join in the tummy, jump in the tummy of L. We have done this many times. So La looks like this. La. And then O, oh, Lao, oh, there you go. Lao, bring something. Let's do one more. La, O. Oh. Let's do another one. Here is Ka and a Do Chashmi here. Kha. Today is our lesson number 26. In the last five videos, day number 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25, we did nothing but Do Chashmi here. We spent five full days learning Do Chashmihe, the uses of Do Chashmihe, that is, how Do Chashmihe is used. Do Chashmihe is used uh, to combine ten letters with He to produce a sound, to produce the letters, to produce a sound that do not exist in Urdu. Kh. So here's our Kh. In Hindi, of course, we have a letter right here, Kh, to which we're going to add Alif. So that makes it Ka. And you guessed it. There is no suspense there. Cow. Eat something. Cow. So when it when it combines, it becomes like this. Ka and then oh cow. That's all. Just a few more. Cow. Ao. Jao. Lao. Cow. 
just a few more. As I said, I only have 10 of them. We already did four. Oh, this one, I don't know why I have it, but since it's there, we'll, we'll do it. So here's no. And now, we just used those shishmi hair, but now we're going to use a different hair. We have four hairs, as we have done before. That's a buddy hair. These two are called choti hair. Which shape does it take? Whether it takes this shape or whether it takes uh, whether it takes the other shape, it depends on what it appears in the, in the, in the world. But those are both hairs. That's a hair, buddy hair. And that's those chashmi hair. Those chashmi hair is only used to produce these kind of sounds. We talked about it all um, many, many times in the last five days. The words that we are about to write requires this hair. Huh? And alif. That makes the ha. And you guessed the last part already. And then o. Oh. Now how? Take, take a bath. Take a bath. Now how? No. Ha. O. Oh. Now how? I'm going to rewrite this word, Nahao, up here, so that you can see it can be written like this. The way it is written is fine, there is nothing wrong with it. It can be written like this, but every once in a while, well, not every once in a while, quite often, you will see it written like this. Instead of like this, it's going to be like this. The noon looks like this. That's the noon. That's this part right here. Nahao. No. Oh, now how? They're the both. They're the same thing. Let's do next one. B. And then J. And Aleph. That makes a cha. Aki matra. And you guessed it. Bachao. Let's put them together. Cha, we know when it's about to join something, it looks like this. So that's what it's going to be. But what happens? happens? So here's a b, and then a cha, a chao. And just like here, just like here, you can write it like this. This thing right here, it looks more of a child's handwriting, or you can write it like this. This is more of a grown up handwriting. I'm going to rewrite this word, a chao, up here, and we're going to write it in a different way. In a, in a little bit of a grown way, a uh, grown up way rather. So let's first write, this corresponds to this one, so let's write underneath it, B, Cha, O. The reason it's considered a little bit of a childish handwriting is because you have to lift the hand, B, and then you have to lift your hand to write Cha. We don't do that. This is how we write it, B, Cha, O, Bachao, to save, Bachao, Khana Bachao, Pese bachao, save some food for me, save money, pese bachao. Let's do one more. B, na, o. Oh, as you can see, there is there is nothing to it. Once you understand the concept, there is nothing to it. The o is like this, alif and wow, that's an o, but that's not how it's going to sit. So let's go. B, Na, oh, banao. Make something. Banao. Let's do one more. Banao. The next one. This is dal. This letter is called dal. It makes a duh sound. Duh. But, but, but we don't want a duh, we want a di. Di but choti, choti ki matra. Choti ki matra means it takes a zer. It takes a symbol and then it called zer. Di. And then same letter as before we learned it. I'm not going to explain it again. Di, ka. And you guessed it. Dekhao. Show it to me. Dekhao. Dekhao. Let me rewrite it so it doesn't go all over. Right now they're not lining up. I say I don't like it. It looks ugly. There we go. 
the coal. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more, but this time instead of a choti ki matra, we'll have a uki matra, choti uki matra, not badi uki matra, choti uki matra. Choti uki matra, instead of a zair, it's going to take a pesh. It's going to take a symbol on the top called pesh, and that symbol happens to look exactly the same as what you use in Hindi, except it goes in the bottom. Except it goes in the bottom. bottom. There we go. You see how similar they are? This is called pesh. This symbol is called pesh. Like this. And instead of going on the top of the letter, in Urdu we put it on the top of the letter, in Hindi you put the bottom of the letter. And now we have a different word. Instead of dikhao, it becomes dukhao. Dukhao. Let's make, a, let's make a tiny phrase out of it. We have the room here. I'm going to put something else here. So again, there is your dal again. That's a da. We need a choti ki matra. D. And then a lam. Dil dukhao. Dil dukhao. Give me a heartache. Hurt my heart. Hurt me. Hurt my feeling. Dil dukhao. Dil dukhao. Let's do one more. But that's how you would write it. Let's do one more. Seen. This, let, this letter is called seen. That's a so. And then a meme. That's a mer. Let me rewrite it. I don't like the way it came out. And then a mer. Meme. Some. Then a jar. You guessed it. You guessed it. How it's going to end. Some jar. Make me understand. Make me understand. Some jaw. Now we put them together. When meme, when meme is about to join something, it no longer starts on the top and goes to the bottom. It starts on the bottom and it goes like that. Seen when it's about to join something, it no longer looks like this. It's just going to look like this. So let's begin. So here's your sir. And then for a meme, to join meme, we give it one more. And bring a meme, that's the meme, there we go, that's so far we have some, some, to which we're going to join the jaw, some jaw, oh, some jaw. Make me understand, some jaw. Let's put them together. Well, it's already together, I'm going to rewrite it, just rewrite right here so we can see the contrast. We're going to rewrite it in a little bit of a grown up handwriting. Some. Jao. I'm not sure how grown up that was, but that's about as grown up as I can get. Some jaw. Let me redo it. I don't like it. That's much better. Very good. That's some jaw. Now this fancy part that I did here, sometimes people are lazy and they don't want to take their time to make two of these. So instead of making two of them, they make one long one. So this part that you see here, right here, that's so. That's a mo. And then a ja and a o. Some jaw. Make me understand. Some jaw. Let's do one more. We're going to write a small phrase just like before. Just like before, we're going to write a small phrase just like we wrote dil to khao. Let's write another phrase. Let me not do that right now altogether. It's too early for that. Let's take care of the Hindi because Hindi is very straightforward. You don't have to worry about how things are joined. Go. This is go. That's a ga. To which we're going to add aki matra. Ga. And then noon and alif. That makes a na. Gana. So let's first put them together. Let's first put them together before we write the phrase. When gaf is about to join something, gaf or kaf, gaf or kaf, this is kaf and this is gaf, ka or ga, when they are about to join something, the, ch the shape changes dramatically. It will look like this. That's a ka. And that's a ga. And since we want a ga, we just join the alif with it. 
and now you're going to see how it looks like when it's written freehand. Gana, ga, like this. That's how you write it. Ga, and then na. Gana. 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 And you can pretty much guess what I'm about to write the next part. Gana what? Seen. But we don't want seen, we don't want so, we want su. Chotiyo ki matra. Su. Su. Na. O. Su nao. Gana su nao. We already put that together, we just have to put this one together. So here we go, I'm going to write it in two different ways. First, a little bit of a childish way. Two for the scene, one extra one. Su, na, o. Actually, there is nothing here to make it more complicated. This is it. So now, another way we could have written is that instead of making noon so big, we could have written the scene a little bit differently. If you can write scene differently, then the noon has to be a little bit smaller, like this. So that's your scene. This part right here is the so part. And if you're going to write it in this style, then the noon has to be a little bit smaller. And they are both perfectly acceptable. Gana Sunao. I forgot the page. Gana Sunao. That was it. That's all I had. As I said, about 10, 10 examples of words which, which require the usage of Hamza because these were, such, these were words which happened to have the spelling where alif is followed by a vowel because it has an o sound in it. Chotio. Chotio. So one more time, anything that requires chotio, like this, we will not write it like this. We do not write alif and a vowel, just like you would write be and a vowel bo, to make it bo. We do not like alif and a vowel. We write it like this. Alif goes away and put a wow and a hamza. That's what you have to understand here. And if you understood that part, then you have already won, then you have already won one third of the battle. One down, two to go. Tomorrow we'll take, look, take a look at some examples where alif is followed by choti, choti ye. Where alif is followed by choti ye. And if alif is followed by choti ye, we're looking at badi e. Alif and a choti ye requires the use of hamza. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.